Okay, so this is a uh, superposition assignment. Just going to go over a couple with you here, um, just to kind of get you started. And so what we see is we see, and I'll maybe take a look at these first two uh, examples here. What we see are two waves, and I want you to draw the resultant wave at this exact instant. Okay, does that make sense? So they aren't moving. Uh, they have been moving, but this is a snapshot in time where they are interfering in some way. So what I want you to do is to just draw the resultant wave. So pretty straightforward. Again, we did this in class, but let's just get some practice. So if these two waves, doesn't matter which of the direction they're going either, it doesn't really matter because I just want the resultant wave at this exact point. So you have to start from the very far left and you have to include the wave at the very far right. Now there's only one wave here, right? There's not two waves. So guess what? When we add up the first wave plus the second wave, because there is only one wave, um, the resultant wave will be exactly that one wave. Okay? So there's not two waves we're, we're, um, that we're really superimposing at this point, from here to about here. At this point, the second wave starts. You see that? And so what we have to do is we have to take into account um, what's happening here. So we have this measurement of the first wave and then we have a little bit extra and I want you to be as exact as possible that's maybe you know a third or a quarter of the square so I want you to add a third or a quarter of the square and put your new point there now the points that I'll be requiring of you for this assignment will be right on the uh, sort of the vertical lines of the graph paper so this is how many points you're going to need to put on your graph and then we'll connect them kind of with a smooth smooth curve. So over here, so now we have this value for the first point, and I'll just mark that with the red point. So that's the height, one, two, three uh, squares. And then we have about three quarters of a square here, so our resultant wave is going to be this one, plus about three quarters of a, uh, of a square. Okay, you get the point? We'll keep moving through this one, maybe a little bit uh, quicker. So over here, we have about one, two and a half and one and a half maybe. So two and a half and one and a half is going to be pretty close to four. One, two, three, four. So that's where this point goes. All right, uh, over here, so we have just over two and about one and three quarters. So we're going to look right about there. And so on. So you can go ahead and finish that uh, way what this, what do you think this one looks like? And when we get down to the about this point right here, the wave, the first wave ends, and so you can just draw the points right on the only wave that is left. Okay, now that you have your points, you can connect those, and uh, maybe I'll connect that with uh, red. And so anyway, so you're going to be very careful to to draw this with a nice smooth curve. It's going to be even better than mine, of course. Um, but you can connect all those points, and this is what the resultant wave looks like. Okay? So that's what the first one should look like. Got it? Now those were two sort of positive pulses, right? So when they interfered, it was always constructive, and it um, it always it is added on. This one, the second one here that we'll do together, is a little bit different we do have a negative pulse, so that represents, uh, it's going to be a little bit of destructive interference here. So how does this one look? Well, again, up to this point, uh, we don't have two waves interfering, and so we're just going to put the points right on the only wave that exists from here to about here. So at this point, we have, it dips underneath uh, zero, so we have to subtract, you see? So this is about one, two, three, four point three minus point two. So we, we will subtract. You see how that is? If it's underneath that flat line, then we subtract. So now this one over here is about one and a half, <coughs> and this is about one, so we got to go down to one half. So this one's not real tough. Now there's a little bit of a point there which it, that's that's more or less a uh, an error, but you can include that if you want. But it's no big deal. So, yeah, points like this. <laughs> All right, and of course you can fill in the points in between, um, which would be great. Like this one here, that's a that's a pretty big gap, right? Does it jump up over here? Well, how does it? Well, you can figure that one out pretty easily if you went halfway 
in between those two vertical lines, you subtract about a half from here, and so you know, we go to about yeah, about there. And so the line then that you would draw would look something like this. It would just mirror this wave, and then it would start to come down right about there, and sneak just underneath that wave, heading to this point, and so on. Okay. Okay, so if we, um, if we sort of have, have that, let's get back to here. The rest of the diagrams, okay, that looks like a set of lips there, accidentally. So is this one. Uh, but anyways, <coughs> as we get towards the end, we have multiple waves. And so, you know, if you want me to, I suppose I could uh, start you off on one of these. But really, you're adding sort of three different magnitudes, right? Like a, this, this one, and then you're adding this one, and then you're adding maybe another one. And you're just adding them all up and uh, you, you plot your resultant point, okay? So maybe I'll just uh, get started on one for you. Okay, so let's do this one here. I'll bring that into the notes. Make some space here. Okay. All right. So this one, if you want to skip down, you can do this one with me. And again, I'll just go a little bit quicker. So obviously there's only one wave involved here. Now we've got another wave, so we have to drop, <coughs> drop down to about there. And at this point right here, this is where we have one, two, three waves in play. So we have this one, and we need to subtract just over one whole unit. And then we need to add about another half. So I'll do this in a different pen. So this right here represents a negative of just over one unit, so we have to come down just over one unit. And then this, this little spot right here, from here to here, represents another you know, increase of about a positive. So the resultant with all those three is going to be a point right about there. Okay. Uh, now this, this uh, part right here, that's about 1.7 times 2, because there's two waves there, right? So that's about maybe 3.4, 1, 2, 3.4, but we have to take away 1, almost 2. You see that? So from here, i got to go 1, and then almost 2, so the resultant point is going to be about there. So here's also the solution to the first three. Um, I get, I, we did the first two together. Uh, there's the third one. Um, so you can uh, take some time to finish the rest of that, that sheet there. This second part of the linear position assignment is basically what we're doing is we are, remember what you did yesterday in your activity when you had the slinky and um, you sent a pulse and then you sent a pulse and they came toward each other, right? And so you have these pulses that come toward each other and you would have seen yesterday hopefully that when they start to overlap, they make one big giant wave for a second and then they continue on through, right? So um, what we're doing here is we're going to try and sketch the process of these waves uh, colliding with each other. And so this is how it's set up. These unusually shaped wave pulses are headed towards each other in a medium whose wave speed, and we talked about speed of waves as well, there's speed, uh, there's wavelength, and there's frequency, right, in that equation, is one grid unit per second. So at time zero, this is where the uh, waves start at. After one second, your job is to sketch what these waves would look like as they begin to collide with each other. Okay? So each wave has to move over one square each towards each other. All right? So let's start doing this together. I'm going to grab my pen here. All right, so down here, uh, this is going to be sort of equilibrium. And I might just zoom in a little bit here uh, for you, okay? So we have equilibrium. Now this this wave right here is going to move over one unit. So actually, this wave is going to be starting here and ending over here, right? It looks like. 
This wave is going to do the same, so they are going to be right butted up against each other. Do you guys see that? So this is what it's going to look like. Um, we're going to start here. This wave is going to start here. It's going to go up. It's up one unit. They haven't really collided yet. And I'm going to do different colors here for the different waves right now. So this is where we're at for, this, for time one. One second. They've moved one square each towards each other. Okay. So let me just erase some of this stuff so you can see. Okay. So they've kind of come in. They're like this now. Right. Where this was, this is kind of where the waves um, sort of meet. Everyone see that? So now the next second, they're going to uh, now be superimposed on top of each other. So what's going to happen um, when these two waves are superimposed on top of each other? Is the resultant wave going to be um, a smaller sort of amplitude or larger? Okay, these are both positive pulses, so the resulting amplitude when they're actually on top of each other will be a greater positive amplitude. So, uh, we go like this, and let's just start here. And we go over like this. Now, this has moved over one second, right? It's gone over one more second. And now we see that this one has gone over a second, and so really, they're they're on top of each other now. This wave is on top of the other wave, and so it's going to be doubled. Okay, so I just kind of sketch that out to maybe help you envision that because it is kind of tough to envision. So we move over here, and now the amplitude is two. Okay, and if we split that up again, there's one wave that would have been here, and then the other wave would be superimposed on top of that, and that's where that resultant wave comes from. So however you show your work here, this is sort of what your first first two should look like. Okay, now as they continue through, okay, they're going to now, now they're superposed on top of each other, now they're going to leave each other again, right, they're going to keep going through, so each wave is going to move over one more square, so let's see now, this wave is going to be over here, and is it going to be still two units high, or when it comes back to itself, is it going to return to one unit amplitude, or is it going to stay at two? Yeah, it'll return to one unit amplitude. So it's going to you know, move over one square each. Everything's going to move over uh, one square. So we are going to have this one. And then this one is also going to go the other way, right? And it's going to be here and here. So it's going to look very similar to uh, t equals one. Exactly the same. And then t equals four. Of course, the wave that would have started here is now starting over here, and it's amplitude of 1, uh, wavelength of 2, and so on. And so this is just like the beginning wave. And if we were to add direction to all of this, right? So let's see if we can get the arrows, and that, that might help you too. Uh, obviously, they're still this one's going this way, this one's going this way. They're now on top of each other, so they're kind of both going the opposite ways. This one is now heading over here, and so on. Okay, so that might help. Yeah, question? Do we have to draw the arrows? Uh, you don't have to draw the arrows, no. Nope. Um, but like I say, it would sort of maybe help you understand seeing what's going on. All right, so why don't you uh, give this second one a try? Okay, now we do have a positive and a negative pulse coming towards each other. So go ahead and take a few minutes and give that one a try. All right, so let's follow this one through here. Um, again, if they're moving over in uh, one, one grid unit per second, they kind of end up looking kind of like this, right? So that's where you get this one from, one unit over. Now, as they begin to overlap, this one's going to go one unit, this one's going to go one unit, so they're going to be kind of right on, you know, on top of each other, superimposed on top of each other. And we have a positive and a negative pulse. That's where you get just the straight line. They exactly cancel each other out, okay? So that's complete and, and total uh, destructive wave interference, okay? And then they emerge because they do still retain their individual properties. So as they pass through each other, there's a moment where they um, completely balance each other off. 
but they still retain their properties as they continue through. So again, with the arrows, you know, we're going this way, uh, and they're, they're kind of uh, exactly blanking each other out there now. And this one is continuing this way, and continuing this way, and so on. Okay. So that would that would be your uh, um, your second one. Questions? All right. Okay. So when you're ready, go ahead and try the third one and get some more practice here. Go ahead and try the third one. So there's your solution there on the right for that one. And then once you've compared your answer with that one, you can continue on with the rest of the worksheet. And so there's the rest of the uh, worksheet. Um, you should all have those. If you are missing one, you can just recopy that onto some graph paper. If you're at home and you find you've lost your assignment or some some reason, you can finish those. Okay, so for those that are missing, or if you want to watch any part of this assignment, uh, I'll put it up on YouTube, be on Google Classroom for you if you want to watch it. <coughs> 